Hi, welcome to my channel and thank you to my subscribers. If you have not already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. So in this video, we are going to see how to set up AWS single sign-on and then add a custom Java application to AWS single sign-on so that users who logs into the AWS single sign-on dashboard can access the Java application directly. So there are multiple steps involved in this integration uh, and I will walk you through each step. If you face any issues, you can come back and refer this video or you can leave a question in the YouTube comments and I will reply back to your question. So I'm going to use Chrome for configuring the AWS single sign-on. I'm going, to, I'm going to use Mozilla for testing the integration and I am actually using Spring Tool Suite for setting up the Java project. You can use any IDE, uh, whichever you are comfortable with, like Eclipse or IntelliJ. Uh, so let's go back to the AWS Management Console and start configuring the AWS Single Sign-On. So you can search for the AWS Single Sign-On service here if you have not already done so and then click that option. So when you try to access AWS single sign-on for the very first time, you need to enable it. Let's go ahead and enable it. And you can actually uh, go ahead and choose the identity source. You can leave it as AWS SSO for now. And uh, other than that, I don't think you need to do anything else. Uh, so by default, once you enable it, it will have all the default settings for this integration. You can just go ahead and use the default setting and later on you can explore the other options. So you can see some uh, options here like applications, users, groups. So I will go ahead and set up a group a user, just a test user for now. So I will set it up as test user one and user dummy email address. And I will use that same email address. You can add all these attributes if you want, but uh, for this integration, you really don't require all those options. So I have created the user and uh, you can see, yeah, you can see the user uh, values here. So I will go ahead and reset the user password. Uh, I will just generate a one-time password from here because the email address that I gave is just a random email address and that is not going to work. So I need to first log into this portal uh, and this is the uh, AWS SSO dashboard portal. I will copy this, go to the Mozilla browser, try to access the portal. Yeah, so it shows the login page and let me copy the username and let me copy the password. So very first time it will actually ask to reset the password. So I'm going to reset the password. So I was able to successfully log in to the AWS dashboard, but I don't see any applications, which is expected because I didn't add any applications to AWS SSO. So if you basically go to this applications option, there are no applications that I added. So that's why it is showing as you do not have any applications, but the AWS SSO's configuration is done. We created a user, and we are able to log into the dashboard using that user. So until now, everything is fine. Now let's go to the next step of configuring a Java web app, which supports SAML Federation protocol, and then adding the Java web application 
as a custom application in AWS SSO. And this particular user can then access that application directly from this SSO dashboard. So in order to build that Java application, I'm going to use a open source library. Uh, like there is a one login SAML Java app. So you can, they have a GitHub link. You can go there and download download the source code from here. I have already downloaded and kept it here. So like if you are doing it for the very first time, you can download the source code as a zip. And uh, so this is a pretty handy library. It's not necessary that you have to use only this Java SAML library. You can use a Java Spring SAML framework or any other open open source Java SAML library that is available in the in the market. So I'm just using this for my integration um, because I felt it, this was pretty easier to integrate. You are welcome to use any open source library for this SAML integration. So I already downloaded this zip file. I'm going to unzip it. And uh, if you open this project, you will see multiple multiple sub projects within that folder. Now I'm going to import this project in the Spring Tool Suite. And uh, I, I'm assuming you already know Java and you have already built Java applications in the past. So I'm not going to go through each and every step. But anyway, uh, I will go through some some of the high level steps. Like I'm going to import this Maven project here. So you have to select that uh, root folder where that uh, uh, project files, the source code got unzipped and click finish. So I think it got imported. Uh, let me try to build this project and see there are no other issues. Yeah, there is uh, one error. I think it's in the XML file, but I think you can actually ignore this error. This is not this is not going to create any compilation issues. But if you really want to remove this error, you can go to the preferences. Uh, I think somewhere here in the XML validation, you can disable the validation apply and apply and close i think i think it should go away but i'm not sure anyway let's do a clean build again and see what happens Yeah, I'm not sure, uh, but anyway, that's it, this is not a problem. You can just ignore this. So if you look at the source code, right, there are multiple Java projects and within this SAML toolkit sample, there is a JSP sample project. And if you go back to that uh, one login GitHub, uh, like, uh, So here they would have explained certain things like uh, how to configure that uh, sample app. So if you go to this uh, Java SAML uh, somewhere here, I think uh, yeah, somewhere somewhere in this uh, article in the readme file, they, yeah, here they have explained how to configure it. So if you go inside this Java SAML kit JSP sample, you will find one file called one login SAML properties and this is where you will see all the 
configuration that is required for integrating this Java application with a SAML identity provider like AWS SSO. So before going there, we need to create a Tomcat server to deploy this application. So I will set up that Tomcat app. So I already have a Tomcat uh, server downloaded here. So you can download your own version of Tomcat from the Apache website. I have the 8.5 version. I'm just adding that server here and I will add this Java SAML toolkit there. So now I should be able to start the server. Yeah, I don't see any errors. So, so looks like uh, there are no issues. So now let me try accessing this uh, URL. So if you scroll this, scroll to the top of this file, there is there is a metadata URL for this application. So let me try accessing that metadata URL. So I got some error so if you look at this error it says invalid settings idp entity id not found idp sso url invalid so none of the values are configured and that's why you are seeing this error which is which is expected so if you actually copy this idp entity id and search for that value here somewhere within this file you will see a configuration for idp entity id and that should be empty so yeah so it's here so if you look at these values, right, it's actually empty for now. So we need to configure all these things based on the AWS SSO configuration, which we will be seeing in the next step. But as of now, the Java application compiles properly. We are able to deploy it to your Tomcat server and access the metadata.jsp page. And since the configuration values are empty, we are getting an error. So let's actually go back to this aws sso configuration and add a new application and configure this java application so let's select custom saml 2.0 app and name it as one login java java saml app and we have certain values here we will get to that in the next step so it asks for the application start url we can leave it as empty and it asks for the application metadata file and we don't have a metadata file which is accessible from internet so let's click this option and it asks for the application acs url and application saml audience so the acs url is available here if you look at this configuration assertion consumer service url so let's copy that and put it here and the saml audience is actually the entity id of this application and you can copy this put it here save changes so now we added these custom java saml application in the aws sso configuration let's actually assign it to the test user which we created in the very first step and let's go back to the configuration and see what are all the values that are available here so there is a single sign on sign in url which is basically the login url there is a sign out url there is a issuer url and a certificate so we need to configure all these values in that java saml application so that the users can single sign on to that application so let's go back to the Java application and see what are all the things that are that needs to be configured. So if you scroll down, there is a IDP entity ID that needs to be configured. So let's go back to AWS console and see what is the IDP entity ID for this particular AWS SSO configuration. So the easiest way to check that is download this metadata which is available here and open this metadata so in this metadata actually this 
this browser is not pretty good and so let let me open it in a different browser let me open it with chrome so if i open it with chrome you can see the entity id of this metadata copy this entity id and go back to this uh, java project and paste it here so this is the entity id and then we need the single sign on service url again go back to chrome you can actually see it in this metadata file itself but the other option is to go back to this aws sso console and copy from here but i will actually copy it from the metadata anything anything will work so this is the single sign on service url and then you have the logout service url which we don't need we can ignore it for now the next thing is the public certificate that needs to be configured here so if you go back to this aws sso console we have the certificate here again so let's download this certificate and uh, if you go back here there is an option to copy this certificate value directly in the uh, configuration file so let me open this certificate you can view it uh, so this is the certificate public certificate which actually which will be used for verifying the saml assertion so there are actually a couple of options uh, you can directly copy the certificate here which i don't recommend the other option is to copy the certificate the certificate fingerprint so let's actually go for that option and comment out this one and let's uncomment the fingerprint option so if you look at this command right we have to actually use this command to generate the fingerprint for that particular certificate so let's open the mac console uh, the terminal and uh, execute this command so the input to this command is the certificate file so i am just adding it here and then if you look at this command there is an option to specify the algorithm i am going to specify sha256 so i got this fingerprint so copy this fingerprint and paste it here so one thing that needs to be done is this colon needs to be removed uh, because this colon is it's just a format that open ssl generates but this colon is not required so let's actually remove this colon what i will do is i will i will actually copy this value in a text editor and let's actually find and replace i hope this has a replace option okay i don't see a replace option there so let let, let me do one thing let me just create A file here and put it here and then replace colon with empty and let's also actually convert it to lowercase I think there is an option here to convert to lowercase anyway i think it's it, it's not required but anyway uh, let me just paste the uh, version so here we have the fingerprint without the colon and uh, then what else i think that's all we need let me ac actually stop this server rebuild the project me actually do a clean build okay. 
let's start the server again. So uh, I hope uh, the metadata JSP will work now. Let's try refreshing it. Yep. So now if you see that uh, metadata.jsp work because we have configured all the required values here like the single sign on URL of the IDP, all those details. So now, now we have done the configuration for the Java app. We have assigned this Java app to the test user. The uh, Java application is also running. Let's actually try to refresh this page and see if the Java app is showing up. Yes. So the Java app is showing up. Let's try to access it and see if there are any issues. So you might face some issues. Don't be uh, like, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, that That is perfectly understandable. And we can, we can actually debug all these issues and see what is happening. So when I try to access, I am actually getting some error saying, uh, I, it just says 403 and we don't know what what is the issue so let's do one thing uh, instead of accessing from the AWS SSO let's directly go to this Java app and try accessing it and see what happens so I, I see the login page here let me try to log in so when I try to log in it actually posts a SAML request to AWS SSO and you can see the SAML request here and once it reaches the AWS SSO it actually gives an error. So most probably there is some configuration issue which we are not aware. So let's take a look at it. Let's see. Let's take a look at it and see what is really happening. So if I look at this consumer service URL, let's make sure it is exactly same as what we see here in the AWS SSO configuration for that Java application. Yes, it's exactly same. And then let's make sure this destination URL is correct. Yes, that is also correct. So what else might be missing? So let's, let's actually check. So here in the attribute mappings, we need to actually give the subject I think that is the missing piece. Uh, let me go to AWS SSO attributes. So you can search in Google and you will see this attribute mappings documentation for AWS SSO. And as of now, let's set this value to the user's email address and format as and specify. So now let's come back to this screen and try accessing that application again and see what happens. So now when I try to log in, it again posts a SAML request. And now I got a response from AWS SSO, which is great. So if you look at this response, you can see, and if you look at the summary, you can see the subject of the user is set to test user one at example.com but I still get an invalid response issue and I think most probably it has to do with this certificate because there is nothing else I can see here there is uh, there are no other issues I in this configuration but uh, anyway let's see uh, let's actually enable the debug mode here and see what is the exact issue so in order to enable the debug mode set this value to true one login saml 2debug you can again build the project and start it now we will know what is the exact issue so i will go back to the mozilla browser and click login again uh, let's clear this saml tracer so this is saml tracer which i frequently use for debugging purpose and it's a very handy tool so if you look at this uh, error right it says invalid saml response the saml response doesn't match the schema I, I don't know why this error is thrown but i think there is some option to disable this schema validation so let's go through this saml file and see if there is any way to disable that schema validation uh, 
yeah so want xml validation let's actually set it to false again build i don't know why that schema validation error is thrown something something has to do with that xsd schema that this java application is using and validating it against the saml assertion that is posted by aws sso but anyway that is out of scope of this integration you can verify that later as of now let's just go ahead and uh, disable that schema validation and see what happens so the server started again uh, let me clear this saml tracer and log in again yeah so the great thing is the login is successful we don't see any issues the only error you see here is basically it says there are no attributes to display and that is under understandable because if you look at this saml assertion here are the attribute statements uh, you can check uh, the attribute statements there is no attribute the only attribute that is sent back not an attribute the only uh, user level details that is sent back in the saml assertion is the saml subject which is the email address of the user so now let's go back to this attribute mappings and let's add some additional attributes for this user so let's add a name and go to this documentation copy this user colon name let's add first name go back to this and set given name let's add last name and go to this documentation and family name we have a family name attribute add that one and let's add email and again use the same attribute let's save the changes and i hope these changes are already saved so let's clear this and let's click logout and this error is because we didn't configure any logout url so you can ignore this error and again remove this do logout jst and let's try to log in again so the saml request got posted the saml assertion came back and now you see the user attributes here the same at values that we set when we created that user so if you go to this user profile and if you go to this profile you can see username is test user one first name is test last name is user one display name is test space user one and then email address is test user one at example.com and you can see the exact same values here and if you look at the saml response now if you look at the summary you can see saml attribute statements the last name email first name name so now the user is able to successfully log into this java application using aws sso credentials so i will do one thing so what we did was user tried to access the java application and then the java application didn't have an application session so it showed the login page the user clicked the login button and since the user is already logged into this aws sso dashboard aws sso dashboard didn't show the login page instead it directly reused that user session and posted the saml session back to this java application and this java application displayed this these details so let's do one more thing i will clear this saml tracer i will clear all the cookies so that uh, the user won't have any aws sso session and i use this mozilla plugin for clearing the cookies you can use any plugin to clear the cookies now when i try to access this java application it will again show the login page and let's clear the tracer and when i click login button it posts a saml request to aws sso and shows the aws sso login page because the user is not logged into aws sso so now let me log into aws sso yep so the login is successful and the user is now able to log into the java application using aws sso credentials 
So now I will show you, and this is called SP initiated SSO in SAML world because the user tried to access the service provider, which is a Java application, and then logged in using the identity provider, which is the AWS SSO. Now I will show the different flow where the user will log into the AWS SSO dashboard and try to launch this Java application directly from the dashboard. So I will clear these uh, traces and the cookies again. And we need the AWS dashboard login URL. If you go to settings, somewhere here, you should see the URL. Yeah, here is the URL, copy it. Now, when I type the URL, it will ask for the credentials. The, so I will log in using my test user credentials. So now I see the Java app here. Let me clear this SAML tracer and directly launch this Java app from the SSO dashboard. And you should see a SAML assertion getting posted back. Yep. So the so the SAML assertion got posted. You can see the user details here. And there is no SAML authentication request in this case because the user directly logged into the identity provider's dashboard and launched the application. So this is called as IDP initiated SSO in the SAML world. And uh, and we saw both the flows where user directly tries to access the Java application and it shows the login page. And when the, when the user tries to log in, it shows the AWS SSO login page. And we saw the other flow where the user directly logged into the AWS SSO dashboard and then launched the Java application. And so this is how you do the end-to-end -end setup. And I'm sure you will face lots of issues in this entire end-to-end -end configuration. So you can come back and refer this video or you can post your questions in the YouTube comment and I will reply back to those questions. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and again, please subscribe to my channel and thanks for your support.